My name is Lucy Elton Cross, and I spent many happy years in the earlier part of my life at Elton's Island, which before the Eltons had it was called Davis Island, and after the Eltons had it is still called Davis Island on the map, on the chart, sorry. Uh, and there are many people in these pictures. These pictures were taken 1929-1930. This is my grandfather, J.P. Elton, John Prince Elton of Waterbury, Connecticut and of Stony Creek and uh, Elton's Island. He, that's the only picture you'll see of him without a jacket. Uh, he had two daughters. Uh, my mother was his second daughter. His first daughter was um, Deborah, or known as Dobby, and my mother was Charlotte. And he did, he did different activities with his two daughters. He always went sailing with Dobby, and he went golfing with Charlotte. So they had different sports that they enjoyed with their father, and they never traded places <laughs> at all. So there he is in his plus fours, in his enormous boat called the Cock Robin. And that was usually anchored moored right outside in the channel between the, between the islands. That is my aunt, Dobby, sitting on the stone dock of the bathing beach, which is on the other side of the island from the cottage dock, which is where these ladies are standing. This is the bathing beach, and we're fishing for shiners. There are two little boys uh, who were adopted by my grandparents in the 20s. This was when uh, Dobby and Charlotte were already grown up, uh, and I guess Dobby was already off at college, and my mother was in high school still. Uh, at Crosby in Waterbury. And I don't know exactly where these little boys came from. One was named Sam, he was the older one, and one is Johnny. And he's the little urchin who is so, sort of running around being left behind by everybody and wearing glasses and uh, a little bit of a loser, but he's very, very cute. There's Johnny in the rowboat, just fooling around, trying to learn something. I guess he's got the dog with him. That dog's name is Twinkie. And here we are on the bathing dock. There's the bathhouse in the background. And the gentleman in the jacket, in the suit there, seems to be puffing on a pipe, perhaps. Uh, he is a genuine Native American from Seneca Falls who was married to one of my grandmother's sisters. My grandmother had about eight sisters and it's a little confusing when they're all at the island. You don't know exactly which is which. <clears throat> uh, but his, his name was Howard Gansworth. This is my mother and she's Johnny is tagging along behind her 
She was studying dance very intensively at the time. Later in life, she became uh, a member of the dance troupe, the touring troupe of Ruth St. Dennis and Ted Sean, and went all over the country uh, dancing in, in what were sort of interpretive folk dances, Indian dances, Egyptian dances, uh, meaning Native American Indian as well as India Indian. Uh, they had all kinds of different, oh, uh, there was a gypsy dance she taught me too. Uh, and she does a little dance later on on the dock. I don't know what kind of dance it is, but anyway, you can see that she's always sort of stretching her legs and kicking around doing little plies. Here is my mother and her sister, and this is how we know that it's 1929 and 1930 because they're both going off to Vassar. My aunt graduated from Vassar in 1930 and my mother in 1932. Here she is practicing her kicks and getting into the most magnificent automobile. This is at 70 Church Street in Waterbury. Bye-bye. Now here is the famous snowman with legs, and uh, Sam and a friend of his, that's not Johnny, but uh, Sam on the left, uh, throwing snowballs at the snowman. And the reason that the snowman is so sooty is that 70 Church Street was only one block away from the railroad station, and the railroads all ran on coal power at the time. So every time a, t a train came into Waterbury, these great puffs of black smoke would come and settle on the backyard like that. This is the Vassar graduating class of 1930 in their outfits. Now I know that my aunt Dobby is in this procession, but in this part you can't see the faces of anybody. Probably my grandmother was manning the camera.
grandfather wore a jacket and a hat all the time, even no matter how hot it was. And he never went into the water, never swam. This is a, an amusing rubber horse that you will see more of. My grandmother didn't really swim either. And she would stand in this place, you'll see a picture of her, and move her arms and pretend she was swimming. But she never really took her feet off the ground underneath. There she is walking with the rubber horse, or someone is. There's my grandmother doing her, her arm motion in the water. That's all she ever did, standing on the bottom. visitors. My mother in the bathing suit on the left. I don't know who the rest of the people are. Here she is in her Ruth St. Dennis dance. And that's our bathing house in the background. She's dancing on the stone dock in bare feet. Here comes the Charlotte with another load of guests. I have the blueprints for this boat somewhere as my grandfather designed it, decided what it was supposed to look like. It was a very, very beautiful boat, fun to ride in. And of course, it didn't matter if it rained because you could be in the cabin there. Whoops, that's a move she never really quite got. But many people came down from Waterbury, church people mostly. My grandparents were very important in the church life of St. John's Church. And this is a speedboat that my grandfather bought but kept for only one year. He thought it was really a waste of time, a waste of gas, and a waste of money, and he didn't care for speed anyway. So that did not stay in the family. Got rid of it right away.
But when you took films with that 16 millimeter camera, it was, it was handheld and it really didn't hold enough film to show for more than five or seven minutes. I don't remember exactly. I still have the camera actually. So they all got strung together. Now here's my grandmother with a guest of hers. That's Dobby. And her guest is an Episcopal nun. And uh, I have a pretty funny story. Later in life, later in the history of the island, my mother brought her best friend for a visit for a week long. And uh, my grandmother was giving her some instructions about how we behaved on the island and what we did uh, habitually. We always went into Stony Creek to go to church, but except when it was too stormy or rainy or something. And we held, we would hold our own church services up in the big house in the middle of the island. We had a piano in that music room and uh, we called it the saltwater piano because it never was tuned and it was about a half step too, lo too low. But we would have our hymns and our little prayers and our little speeches. But most of the time we went into the church in Stony Creek. And my grandmother, not realizing that my mother's best friend was a Congregationalist, was telling her, now when Sunday comes around, we all get into the boat and we go into Sony Creek to church. It's only congregational, but we go. Well, thank you very much for paying attention, and uh, I hope you've enjoyed our pictures. Uh, even though they're a little bit disjointed, but it does remind one of what wonderful times we had there. <laughs>